Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at what is a scatter brush in Illustrator. Now there are lots of different types of brushes that you can create in Illustrator and every single one of them has different properties. I've created a black flower here. Now I've created it black for a really good reason. If we go to the black that I'm using, I've actually set its CMY and K values to 100%. That's really critical, particularly if you're working in RGB color mode. You need to make sure that for these brushes, the black is perfectly black. So I'll just click OK. So I've just got a flower here. I'll open up the brushes panel. I'm going to create a scatter brush from this. So I'll click the new brush icon, select scatter brush and click OK. Now I'm confronted with this dialogue that has a lot of things in it. Right now, the only thing I'm going to change is this colorization method. I'm setting it to tints. The reason for this is that that will allow me to recolor my brush. If I paint on the brush and if I choose a color for that stroke, then the brush is going to be that color. You do that by setting a colorization method. It's also why it was really important that the color of the original brush was 100 in all the CMY and K channels because that is pure black. So when we recolor it, we're going to get a good match between the color we choose and the color that's actually used with the brush. If you don't use that, if you use that sort of washed out black, then the colors on your brush won't be perfect. So I'm just going to click OK for now. We don't need this any longer, so I could delete it. I'm going to brush on my brush. So I can just select a brush and I can click here on the brush to use and just paint it on. Now you can also do it from a stroke. So for example, I could draw a pen line. I'm just going to press the letter D to set back the default settings so that we'll see a pen line as it would typically look if you drew the pen line yourself. Just press escape to finish the line. I'll select over the line. If I click on the brush, then the brush will be applied to that line. The same thing would happen if you drew a line with the pencil tool. You just draw the pencil tool. And if the brush isn't automatically appearing on it, you can just click on the brush itself. Now, if you want to ever remove the brush, you just select the line and click here to remove the brush stroke. And you're back to just your regular line. Now, I don't need all of these. So let's just get rid of everything except this one. We didn't make a lot of settings to the scatter brush when we first set it up because we really don't know what those settings are going to do. So it's always best to actually apply the brush to something and then double click on the brush. Now we can see the effects live. And if you want this to paint as a sort of garland of flowers, then you would go and set the size to, for example, random. And we'll do it somewhere between, say, 50% and 100%. So now we get a different size brush as we paint along. If you're familiar with using brushes in Photoshop, then this is pretty typically the kind of effect that you can create in Photoshop. So here we have a size, a random value, somewhere between 55% and 100% of the original brush. Now spacing, we can also set to random. So you could set it to say 80% of the original spacing and all the way up to quite a bit more. So you can vary how the brushes appear along the line. Now scattering, if we set that to random, of course for each of these there are other options that you can set it to. I'm just setting it to random but if you're using a Wacom tablet for example then you could set it to pressure or tilt or whatever. But I'm just setting all these to random. So scatter will move it either side of the line. So if I drop the scatter down on this side, it will go one side of the line. You can see that it's dropping below the line. Well, if I increase the scatter the other way, it'll go both sides of the line. So we're getting a lot more bang for our bucks, if you like, on this brush as it's appearing in more places which means at this point we may want to start adjusting the spacing because we can actually fit more flowers along the line because they can be closer spaced together because they're going either side of the line, not necessarily along the line. Now rotation, it's going to depend a little bit on what shape you're using. Rotation for a circle is totally meaningless because you rotate a circle, it looks exactly the same as it did before you rotated it. With these flowers, there is a bit of a rotation. You can see that a 90 degree rotation would pretty much take this flower around to look exactly as it did before. So if we went from zero to 90 degrees, then we'd get some rotation in these flowers. I'll click OK. I'm asked if I want to apply the changes I just made to the stroke I've got. So I'm going to click yes. Let's see how we would recolor this brush. I'll just choose a red color. You can see that we've got one for one match really with the 
brush colour and the colour that we selected. That would not be the case if we hadn't used a really black black. Now once you've set up the settings for the brush, any time you use that brush, you're going to get those exact same settings. So let's just go and do that. Let's go and get a brush tool. Let's make sure we have our brush targeted. Here we have our brush and the same settings are being applied to that line. Now it's also possible for any brush, not just the scatter brush, to also adjust the properties just for this line. So what I've done here is just selected the line and clicked this icon and now the changes that I'm making only affect this particular brush stroke, the blue one. And what I'm going to do is really reduce the size. I'm going to take it from 10% of the original size to 25% of the original size. I'll go to preview. You can see here now we have very, very scattered apart, very, very small flowers. The size has been adjusted to a really small size. So you can do lots of things with these brushes in Illustrator, these scatter brushes. They're good for confetti, they're good for bubbles. Just be aware that your brush, if you've only got one object in your brush, it's going to paint that one object colour. Now if you want to do something with the individual flowers from the brush, you can do that. Once you've actually painted them onto the document, you can always expand it with Object Expand Appearance. Let's see in the Layers palette what this gives us because there are a few things to be aware of. Here we've got a group and inside the group are the flowers and inside the flower group is the flower and there's also a no fill, no stroke rectangle that actually specifies the ambit of that flower. So here is what I would suggest you do if you expand these appearances. Go to the group and choose object ungroup and continue to do ungroup until ungroup is no longer an option. Now I would come in and select one of these paths. You can see it here, it's a no fill, no stroke rectangle. With it selected, go to select and then choose same, fill and stroke. And that selects all the no fill, no stroke rectangles that belong to this scatter brush. Now this is just a feature of brushes in Illustrator. It's not something that's happening just for a scatter brush. It's going to happen on pattern brushes as well and you need to be aware of it. Because if you try and fill these with another colour, say you wanted to apply a gradient for example. Let's go to the fill, let's click on the gradient. This is what's going to happen. Those no fill, no stroke rectangles are just going to bite you. They're just going to ruin whatever it is that you're trying to do. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go back and select just the no fill no stroke rectangles with select same fill and stroke and now I'm just going to delete them press delete now they've gone so now when you select over the shapes because you want to recolor them let's recolor them with a gradient only the flowers are changing color not that no fill no stroke rectangle so just be aware of those little bounding boxes that appear on brushes when you expand those brushes this is obviously a means by which you can apply say a spectrum gradient for example across your flowers so there's a brief introduction to scatter brushes in illustrator i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope you've learned a little bit about scatter brushes if you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell and we'll let you know when new videos are released. And until next time, my name is Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.